What was missing before was either VR was too expensive or affordable options were just not comfortable. Comfort can be quantified in a very real way. Of seven aspects required for good VR, the primary tech requirement was frame rate. While movies and renderings have given satisfactory results at 24 frames a second, VR has a whole new level of requirements. Today, architectural software is not optimized to handle the high frame rates required for stereoscopic viewing. Keeping track of these requirements, like frame rates and thinking through optimizations, are time better spent designing in a traditional manner. While game developers have been asking themselves, what is the frame rate of this particular environment, architects and designers have not. And while architectural software lags behind, gaming has been pushing the bleeding edge. So where's the middle ground? Compromises must be made when introducing a virtual environment. Panning, rotation, and zoom just don't cut it. This type of navigation would cause a user in a virtual stereoscopic space to experience a high level of motion sickness. The human eye contains two types of photoreceptor cells, rods and cones. The cones are part of your central vision and allow you to focus on detail. The rods are important for your peripheral vision. Filling your virtual field has greater ability to trick your brain into perceiving motion. The average human has a horizontal field of view of 180 degrees. The central vision makes up quite a small portion of this field. As you move away from the center, you gradually start to lose the ability to see detail and shape. Beyond approximately 30 degrees, your peripheral vision starts to take over, and that's where you really start to sense motion. A typical movie theater displays an average field of view on screen of approximately 54 degrees. So going from 54 degrees to 90 degrees with head-mounted displays stimulates hundreds of thousands of new rod cells. This requires a whole new set of rules. Rule number one, if you have to give someone a controller, make sure they're moving at about half walking speed, no faster. Rotating your head with a joystick in a head-mounted display is known to cause vexion. It's very uncomfortable. Vexion is the mismatch of what your eye is seeing to what your body is experiencing. In the next video on future technologies, we'll go over things that allow greater freedom of movement. Rule number two, avoid the seated standing mismatch. If you're sitting in real life and your avatar is standing, you'll experience something called floor dragging. This experience of floor dragging actually messes with your sense of where the floor is and what the scale the world should be at. You're telling your brain that you're a foot and a half taller when you shouldn't be. The simple solution to this is to get your feet off the ground and sit on something like a bar stool. Alternatively, just stand in real life. If you're considering virtual reality in the long term, you might want to consider the flexibility offered by a standing desk. Rule number three, avoid the uncanny valley. The uncanny valley is a 70s robotics term that came about when robots tended to look creepy. While it's easy to point out a creepy looking robot, even Pixar found itself on the wrong side of this valley. It's an easy mistake to make. Pixar later mastered the left side of this valley, where things still look human, but still have the sense of cuteness. We don't know all the factors that lead to this valley, but some robots just push our expectations of what humans should look like. My books are forgeries. Nobody wrote them. One Harvard study suggested that what determines what is human and what isn't is actually the loneliness of the user. In other words, if you're super lonely, an avatar that might look creepy to one person might look totally fine to you. If you want to apply this into your virtual space, just avoid putting human-like avatars in altogether. It's going gonna, it's gonna to creep someone out. Fourth and final rule, err on the gentler side. In other words, don't force someone through a fly-through. It's going to make them sick. Have them move at a very slow pace. It's the same as rule number one. I just wanted to repeat it.